Time to move this water heater. Wish us luck. Let's see how it goes. Not that I don't enjoy going to my realtor's house for the occasional shower, but it would be great to be able to do things like wash dishes and our hands. We're gonna see if we can get this window open because if we can, it would save us so much time. Well, that's not promising. So cool. Hello friends and welcome back to my charming yet decrepit 120 year old house here in Nova Scotia that I'm slowly trying to save and restore. If you're new here, I'm Shannon Makes, hopeless house romantic by day, circus artist by night. And we've got a busy day ahead of us, so let's just hop right in, shall we? All right, friends, day three here at the house and it's gonna be a busy one. We've got a lot of things on the schedule to do today. So first up was originally going to be building a base for our water heater down in the basement, our new water heater, uh, so that hopefully we can get that installed in the next few days and be able to take some showers in this house. Not that I don't enjoy going to my realtor's house for the occasional shower, but it would be great to be able to do things like wash dishes and our hands in hot water. So that was originally going to be first up on the list, but then doing my ritual morning scroll through Facebook Marketplace and Kijiji, I came across this, which is a absolutely free antique couch, which very much fits the aesthetic of this house. Plus actually at the moment we have nowhere to really sit other than this room, which I've kind of cleaned up and the bed, but it's uh, the bed's not ideal for lounging. Not that I'm gonna be doing a whole lot of lounging, but at the same time, it would be nice to have somewhere to sit and drink my coffee in the morning or read my book, which I'm currently working on. At the moment, we are partway through the Alice Network. Really enjoying it so far. If you've been here a while, you've probably seen my video about the phenomenon that is Montreal's moving day. The one day a year where over 70,000 households change apartment on the same day, leading to absolute chaos in the streets and on the sidewalks. A dream day for a dumpster diver like myself. If that concept intrigues you, I highly recommend you go watch the video. I'll be sure to link it down below. It's just a fun little snapshot of Montreal. You can learn a bit more about the concept of moving day and how it came to be that everybody changes leases on the same day. Plus, you'll get to see all the fun treasures I picked up off the streets for the bargain price of free 99. This year's moving day provided a lot of useful items for the house, like the kitchenware we're eating off of, a bunch of renovation material, several towels and rags, and all of the books that I brought with me, including this one. We don't have Wi-Fi at the house and my data plan is quite small. So I've been reading every night before bed, which has been really relaxing. And it's been super fun to dive into these books that I selected based purely on the fact that they were free on the streets of Montreal. I'll be sure to give a little review of this one once I finish it. But for now, let's check out that couch. I saw that couch and it was free and I was like, let's uh, let's go see if we can fit it in my little car. So that's the game plan today. I'm gonna finish my coffee and then we're gonna go get a sofa. Cross your fingers that it fits in my car. So that is actually what we're gonna do first thing this morning. Gonna go down, see if it fits. Then we're gonna work on the base for the water heater. Try to get that raised up so that if the basement does flood again, it won't reach the bottom of the water heater and corrode that out. So couch is done and in the house. And next thing we're trying to figure out the water heater situation. If you want to put this one here and put the ugly one in the basement. Ah, there's this one that's hidden too. There's, there's one, two, three. This one like looks nice and solid. <sighs> Strong, like bull. Oh, I do not have 
the right shoes on for this. So instead of changing shoes, I decided to let Phil work in the basement while I searched for some gravel to go under that giant paver, both to raise it up off the ground, but also to level it out because the basement floor is really uneven. Like I said last video, we discovered it is a concrete floor, but it's very homemade and it's super uneven and bumpy. Luckily, I guess, we have a section of our backyard where a giant pile of gravel has sort of spilled off of the road above it and into our yard. So I decided to go harvest some of that. they close this in the most annoying way possible. Ooh, I should be sponsored by this glove company. Time to move a water heater. Wish us luck. Let's see how it goes. These gloves are good for claps. Alright, how heavy is this? Uh, it's a bit heavy, especially the bottom because of the sludge. Do you want to go down the yes, stairs? Yes, yes. I have to be down. Okay. Nice! Wow, well, look at that! We have a water tank. We're so fancy now. For those of you who are keeping score at home so far today, we've gotten a free couch and used our own hardscaping to make a free platform for our incredibly cheap water heater. Speaking of that water heater, I woke up that morning to this, the sweetest message from David checking in on the water heater he sold us and wishing us well in our renovations, which was just such a refreshing change from being in Montreal where it's very anonymous, you purchase something secondhand and then never hear from them ever again. So I just thought it was very thoughtful and of course, I responded, even offered to help out at his place if he ever needed some spare hands. So what was next on the schedule? And then the rest of the day is probably going to be spent trying to get the house ready for the home energy assessment that should be happening this afternoon. Not entirely sure what all that entails. I'm very intrigued actually to see what that process is going to be. But they do need access to the entire house to be able to correctly perform this assessment, which includes crawl spaces, which we don't have, but basement and attic. And right now the basement is navigable. The attic is not. So we're basically going to try and clear some path in the attic for them to move around in and then also probably start emptying some of that stuff into the dumpster that's out front. A super quick word about the home energy assessment. Basically, the Canadian government, both on the national and provincial level, offer a variety of rebates to homeowners who make improvements to their home that increase its energy efficiency. Now, our house is both very energy inefficient and we're very broke and could very much use some rebates. So sign me right up. <laughs> and the very first step in the program is having an engineer come out to your house to assess where it's at right now, what its base level is in different aspects of energy efficiency. Spoiler alert, ours is probably on the ground in every single aspect. So the water heater is all installed in the basement. It is ready to go, ready to be connected to some hot water whenever our plumber has a moment to swing by and help us do that. So the next thing on the agenda is going to be clearing out the attic so that the home in energy assessment people have access to it to see what they need to see. But the easiest way to do that would be 
to try and get this window here open because that's the window the dumpster is right outside of. And if we can get this open, that means that we can only have to carry everything from the attic down one flight of stairs instead of two flights of stairs, which would be amazing. It would save us so much time and energy, but the problem is that a lot of the windows in this house just don't open. They've been painted shut or they've been silicone shut. So we're gonna see if we can get this window open because if we can, it would save us so much time. Oh wow, that is so crooked. How are you guys doing? Let's try that. That'll work. Okay, cool. Let's try this. Well, that's not promising. Herm. Not looking good. Not looking good. Very not promising. Phil? Can you bring up a hammer? Just trying to coax this window open. Because right now it's, it's uh, the paint is sealed to this. I did manage to, okay, I can see it flexing on this side now. We could try the same thing on this side. Grab my blade up here. There we go. Do the side here, the, the paint cutting action. Woo! All right. Yeah, that opens. So unfortunately, after all that work to open the sash, the screen behind it wasn't even operational. Like it was just a permanently installed mosquito screen without the ability to open or be removed, which was definitely unfortunate, but it actually led to another interesting discovery when Phil went looking for alternative windows to throw junk out of. So cool. You suppose that means the other one does it? Probably. That's so cool. Not in the attic, I don't think. No, but no, no. Maybe, honestly, maybe. Well, no go on the window, but at least now we have a little more airflow. Still gonna be hauling shit down two flights of stairs though. All right, friends, attic time. <laughs> oh, it's gonna be nice and warm here. Have we seen the attic yet? I feel like we haven't seen the attic yet. So first, I'm gonna give you a quick tour, but let's check in real quick with my realtor to see what Jeff had to say about it. So much stuff up here. It's cool though. He's not wrong. The space is both huge and completely filled with stuff. The attic is the size of the entire house and all of it is standing height or higher. Although, as you can see, it's completely uninsulated and unfinished. But honestly, there's so much potential up here to one day do something amazing with it. I'm not sure what it is I'm gonna do with it. Could it be a crafting space, a gaming room, an opium den? Maybe I keep the giant concrete pool table and host wild unhinged game nights and parties. I don't know. What would you do with this space? Let me know what you would do with a giant house-sized, unheated, uninsulated attic full of antiques, which I promise we will sort through in great detail eventually, but for now we have to clear enough space to safely walk through it. Oh my God, that's cast iron. Wow. Tape dispenser, that's like 10 solid pounds. Wow. Pretty works well. Yeah. <laughs> Look. I can see my hammer. I can see outside there. This doesn't look stuck at all actually. You want to give me a hand? I'm going to pry while you lift. Yeah, there we go. Nice. 
So we got the windows opened and then basically just cleared out a tiny little path from one section of the attic, hoping that it was gonna be enough for the inspector to see what they needed to see. And fortunately it was because that was all we had time to do before she showed up. So like I said, the home energy assessment is sort of taking a measure of where your house is currently as a baseline and assessing what improvements it qualifies for. And the inspector both makes the assessments, but then also sits down with you and goes over what course of action or improvements they think you should make to make the best use of these rebates. It's a fairly intricate program with lots of fussy ins and outs regarding what you do and don't qualify for and how you have to submit your paperwork, but it has the potential to help ease some of the financial burden of getting a house more weather tight. It was all very informative and enlightening, but by the end, we were kind of seeing a bit cross-eyed, so we followed the meeting up with something a bit more lighthearted and carefree. home we stopped to pick up a fridge because remember we arrived in the house and the only appliance on the premises was an oven but before that happens i wanted to answer a patron question so ciara woody wants to know if we are planning on converting the coal fireplaces one of which you can see behind us into wood or gas or if we're just going to leave them as decorative and the answer to that is i don't know <laughs> Now, I do know that I love wood fireplaces. I have used them before indoors, so I know that they can be a hassle, they require maintenance and cleaning, but I still love them. I love the smell, the sound, the heat, but the problem is that these fireplaces are built for coal. So they're really tall, they're narrow, and they're very, very shallow. And that's just because of the nature of coal, it burns hotter and slower than wood. So if we were going to use the same exact fireplace, even assuming that the chimney and everything would all be up to code and correct, we would basically have to chop that wood into tiny pieces and then basically keep the fire fed constantly. So. That's not ideal. Then there's the fact that the chimney is ancient. It for sure doesn't have a liner. I don't know what condition it's in and it would be a huge added expense, which at this point, it just feels so frivolous. Although you know, we're looking down the road, right? So down the road, we have other options. At the moment, turning it into a gas fireplace is not an option just because the natural gas lines do not extend to our residence. There is a little bit of natural gas in the area, but not. it doesn't come this far, unfortunately, because I would love to have a gas stove. So gas is not currently an option. Wood doesn't seem to be an option. Electric fireplaces, definitely an option, for sure the easiest and cheapest, but Honestly, electric fires, they just fall flat for me. Another option that I had like considered briefly, because again, this is many, many months and years down the road, possibly the option of putting a, a little wood burning stove or similar unit into the fireplace. That could be an option. You would have the benefit of actually being able to burn real wood, but it would probably take some substantial like renovations to that area and you know, it has to be much deeper. I'm not sure. So I have not looked into the logistics of it, but it would be amazing to make the fireplaces work in some way, shape or form, but it's so far from now. And it's also probably so expensive that I don't have any immediate plans to do anything like that. 
However, if you have experience with turning similar fireplaces in your properties into usable ones, please feel free to let me know how that turned out for you. If you have su suggestions on how I could make my wood burning fireplace a reality, that would make me so, so happy. I have always wanted a wood burning fireplace in my house. So please let me know in the comments down below. Okay, that answers that. So now let's go get a fridge. Twenty nine and a half. Where are we at? From number two to number two. Okay. If we push the seat forward a bit, the whole thing is gonna fit inside. nice to have a fridge in the house, although we actually weren't able to use it until the next morning. But even so, just knowing that we could go out and buy cream for our coffee and real food, fresh veggies and actual meat, it was just, that was a very good feeling. We have a fridge, we have a couch, we almost have hot water. We're basically living in the lap of luxury. There's really kind of only one thing that we don't have. Plus, also at some point today, we should be having somebody from the city come to hook up the power in the other half of the house because as I mentioned, we only have power in this half, which is fine, except that the other half of the basement is the worst half. It's the one that's flooded, has the most damage and the most soggy stuff. to be moved out and thrown in the dumpster, but we don't have any lights. So we're currently working with like our phones and some tiny little LED flashlights. So that would be really fun to get some power in there. So perhaps you already guessed it, but the power did not get turned on. There was some confusion about which type of meter we had. And so apparently nobody came out, which then meant we had to spend a solid half an hour on the phone trying to straighten that whole situation out. Most of it was spent on hold. So we decided to multitask. This is the first of many, many cleanings that each floor will have to have. When the pipes burst, all the radiators exploded, leaving this black residue on every surface, but especially on the floors. And because they burst in every single room, there's black powder all over the house, every single floor. So we've just decided to try and tackle it one room at a time, but it's also very clear that this is gonna take several washings to get all the residue up. No time to start like the present though, especially when the present involves being on hold with the power company. Yes. So what I was just talking about the project about is so because um because it's an all meter, what we normally do is you like I said you should book it it's at least two thirty days in advance. Yeah. And we do have the option of priority booking um like the next day for a a new or an older meter spy. So the next business day would be Monday. Okay. Um Okay, thank you. Perfect. So no power for now, but that's okay. They are scheduled to come out on Monday, which of course we called on a Friday. So we still have to go the whole weekend without power on that half of the house. But you know what? We've got a fridge. We almost have hot water. Heck, we even have pocket windows. Our spirits will not be subdued. So even though we kind of bounced around in between a lot of things, it was actually a very productive day. If we look at our running to-do list, written of course on the back of whatever it was that was lining our leaky kitschy ceiling, we can cross a few things off of that list. <laughs> oh. 
Be sure to check back in for next week. We'll be diving into our attic, as you'll see in a second here. And if you are starting to fall in love with this house in the same way that I did, and you'd like to support the massive task of restoring her, I have both a Patreon and a coffee page, which is also where you can leave me a question for next week's video. I'm really enjoying getting the questions and just seeing what everybody is curious about, about the house. So be sure to keep them coming. And without further ado, let's peek ahead and see what's in store for the next episode. So the plan is going to be to empty this section out here so we can throw everything out that window. Let's start throwing stuff out windows. That sounds like fun. Yeah, it's definitely a butter churn and it still kind of works. Thank you.